So in this video, I will just go through the correlation example. Here is uh, the example as it appears. Let me move myself here. So this is a lot of hand work, but we will expect you to be able to do uh, um, variance, covariance, and correlation calculations by hand in a table based. Um, but we'll also expect you to do that in Excel. So here, let's start with the calculation by hand. And then afterwards, I'll record a separate video uh, for the Excel version. So we'll, if we need, if we want to calculate the sample uh, variance of a, um, a random variable, we calculate one over n minus one times the sum of x i minus x bar squared and then of course for y exactly the same one over n minus one the sum of y i minus y bar squared so the first thing so there's a sum of a term in that term we have x i minus x bar and y i minus y bar so what we first need is actually uh, we need uh, to know what x bar and y bar are so for that we need to sum up all the uh, um, the terms here okay so we have weight measured in pounds and height measured in inches i know imperial measurements but hey there you go so if you sum all of these numbers up you can of course and you should confirm that you should get 1850 if you sum all of these numbers up let me do that in green you get 800 and two and of course we want to know what is the mean of that we have 12 observations so for x bar uh, we have one divide one over 12 times 802 which is um, i could do it by hand but i could also use a calculator i'm using a calculator here on a little side hassle We'll get 66.8333. So 66.8333. And you can already realize numbers are rarely nice uh, integer numbers, but that's the real world for you. And if we calculate 1 over 12 times 1850. We get uh, 1850 divided by 12. We get 154, 154.1667. Okay, so that's the average height weight in pounds. So, of course, now I'll go filling this table. This will be tedious. You don't have to watch the whole video. You can try it yourself and just check at the end that you get everything right. Okay. So we have one five four. Now let's start with this column here. Y i minus y bar one five five minus y bar one five four. So that is zero eight three three three. Then 150 minus 154, 1667 is minus 4.1667. So I'll stop talking now. You realize that some of these deviations are positive for the values where the uh, observations are larger than the mean and some are negative where the observations are smaller than the mean. So again don't watch all of this if this is all crystal clear then just do it yourself and check the result at the end so 
six, six, seven, then one, three, nine minus one, five, four is 15. And one six six seven minus one five four one six six seven of course and one five two minus one five four one six six seven is minus two point one six six seven so as it turns out you can try that yourself if you sum all of these up and you can do that to check that you are right you should get a result of zero so let's do the same no actually let me see what we need for the sample variance we need actually that term squared so let's go let's jump to columns further on here and just calculate what the squared versions of that of this are this is six nine four four then minus four point one six six seven squared is seventeen point three six eleven and uh, then we have 25.83 squared is a very large number, 667.3611, then right, continue here. Yeah. Now you see that actually all terms here are positive, because even if a deviation is negative, the square, squared version of that is, of course, positive again. 0278. I'm sorry, that should be an 8. Um, sorry, I think I messed something up when I copied the numbers here. Yes. Oh, okay. There we go. Guys, so I did these calculations before and I just missed out here. Negative 19 squared is 367.3611. And so you realize this is really tedious, but it's actually really important that you understand how to do these calculations. And we're in your tests, we'll force you to do some of these calculations by hand. You can see in the lessons how we can do that. Point three six one one and eighty four. There's four two seven eight and two seven eight and so there are two more negative fifteen square plus something is two hundred and thirty two seven eight. And then lastly, negative two and a bit squared is on 4.6944. You see I'm always calculating to four decimal points. Now the sum of all of these are 2659.6667. So it means we can already, what have we got here, y, we can already calculate this here, the sample variance for y, 1 over n minus 1, n of course is 12, 12 observations, so 1 over 11 times 2659.6667, uh, just see what we get if we calculate that, 2659. Point six 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 seven divided by eleven is two for one. Two for one point seven eight seven nine seven eight seven nine. So that is the sample variance for the weight. And let's do the same for the height. Just use greens here. So first we have to calculate the deviations, so that's 
six, six, seven. Negative. So here we have a height which is smaller than the average. And let me just continue in silence and concentrate. So later to this stage, when we now have to calculate the squared values of this to get uh, this column, you will appreciate how good it will be if you can do calculations by Excel. Okay, and we'll get to that in a separate video. So that's 6944, so 5.1667 squared is 26.6944 and negative 683 squared is 46.6944. Again, you realize while the deviations are both positive and negative, the squared values are actually all positive. If they are not, then you make made a mistake in your calculations. So that's a very sensible check. We're almost done with this column. So negative 1.833 squared is 3.3611 and uh, 1.667 squared is 1.3611. So if you sum up all of these numbers, you get 1916667. And that is, of course, that number which we need here the sum of the square deviation. So now we get 1 over 11 times 191.6667 and let's see what we get as the sample variance. What have we got? 191.6667 divided by 11. We get 17. Point four two four two four two four two. Let's calculate the. No, we don't need that. We could calculate the standard deviation, sample standard deviations, which are just the square roots of these. Now let's calculate the covariance. Now the covariance is oh, I've already got that. Is one over n minus one, and again the sum. But now it's the sum of what we call the cross product. Okay, so it's xi minus x bar in green. And then to be consistent, in blue times yi minus y, y bar. So that's why we need this column here, where we cross multiply this term and this term and then this term and this term. Okay, so that's what we do in this column. So let me complete that column. 
we have 0 0.833 times 3.1667 turns out to be 2. Point, I'll do that all in blue, 6389. And negative 4.1667 times negative 3.833 is 15.9722. Nine seven two two. So you see, both of these values, both of these values here, are larger than their respective averages. So these deviations are positive, and therefore we get a positive cross product. Here, both of these two observations are actually smaller than their respective means. So they're both negative, but the cross product is because we have negative times negative again, positive. So, and remember the quadrant where we had, where that was the, the mean of x bar and the mean of y bar, observations which are here, which are both larger, where both coordinates are larger than the mean, we get a positive cross product for this column here. If an observation is here, like that second observation, where both x and y are smaller than the mean, we also get positive cross product. But if an observation is here, let's see, actually, let's see that observation five, y is larger than the average, x is smaller than the average. So then we get a value in this case of negative 1.5278. Then we get negative values as we get negative values for that cross product here. Okay. And as it turns out, if you have lots of positive values, so values in the bottom left and top right quadrant, then we get a positive covariance. If we have more, if we find more observations in the top left and the top bottom right quadrant, then we get a negative covariance and therefore correlation. Five, six. So let me just complete that table again. Uh, so you know that if we ask you to do this by hand, we're taking a, into account that this will take a considerable time and that you have to work extremely carefully and check your work. Otherwise, it's very easy in so many calculations to make a mistake. Uh, that's part of the deal. You have to be able to do careful work. Yeah. And the last is uh, negative 2.1667 times 1.1667 and we get negative 2. 5.25528. So we sum all of this up, we get 616. So the values in the positive quadrants are way heavier than the negative ones. We have a few negative ones, but mainly they are in the positive quadrant. So here we get 1 over 11 times. 616.3333. And let's just calculate that. 616.3333 divided by 11. So we get 56.0303. 56.0303. So then we can go to the correlation calculation. We have the sample covariance, which we now know to be 56.0303 divided by the square root of the product of the two variances. So the variance of x is 17.4242 times variance of y, which is 241.78798. Okay, um, let's 
So let's calculate. Uh, let's calculate that. Uh, here. Okay. Um, let's actually start with the numerator. Seventeen point four two four two times two four one two four one point seven eight seven nine that is that the square root of that right here then one over that and then times fifty six point oh three oh three and what we get is zero point eight six three two Okay, that's you know, 0.8632. So that's a quite strong positive correlation. So that was just a detailed walkthrough of calculating uh, covariance and correlation by hand.